Open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verse 1. Hopefully, you have the elements ready because we're going to the table of the Lord, remembering Jesus, friend of sinners. First one reads, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. All the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Who came to Jesus to hear him? Publicans is tax collectors. People that were despised because they worked for the Roman oppressors. Tax collectors and sinners. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured. They were there too. They started complaining, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. He's associating with tax collectors and sinners. Just imagine all the murmuring and questioning these religious folk amongst themselves murmuring and questioning Jesus' actions. For giving the time of day to sinners and tax collectors. There was two groups of people listen to Jesus teach that day. One, let's just put them in a category of sinners. We'll throw the tax collectors in there too. And the second group in this story was the religious leaders who were doing all the complaining. I just could hear it or just imagine what they were saying. They must have wondered why this self-proclaimed Messiah didn't condemn these sinners, which also included the tax collectors. I could sit there, I could, I could imagine them sitting or standing there, saying to themselves, murmuring, that Jesus should be, if he's the self-proclaimed Messiah, that Jesus should be they're judging these people. But instead, what does Jesus do? He eats with them. He's acting like he's a friend of the sinners. God forbid. See, the problem with these religious leaders then and even now is that they don't recognize that they are sinners too. Well, are you saying you're a sinner? Oh yeah. Saved by grace? Part of God's work in progress? With the Holy Spirit in me, that guides me and leads me and utters for me things that I can't even pray for. And that might be something that you think, or well, that might be something you think what I'm trying to refer to. I don't have time to get into it, but that's not what you probably think. That last part. That's the problem. Then and now, religious leaders think that 
Well, why would anyone associate the Christians of today and the religious leaders of Jesus' day with these god-awful people, tax collectors and sinners, the ilk of mankind? Verse 3, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, Doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he finds it. After listening and knowing what's in these religious leaders' hearts, Jesus decided to answer their questionings concerning his actions. And if you really think about it, when you read through this parable of the lost sheep, he really simplifies it. Actually, he gave them three parables. We're just going to look at this first one. This first one is the parable of the lost sheep. Jesus didn't want anyone to overanalyze, and that's why I think it's so simplified. He didn't want anyone to analyze his response or overanalyze is a better way of saying it, his response. So he made it simple. And the message is, you were lost and I came looking for you. You were lost, and I came looking for you. Why did he do that? Because he loves us. Have you ever lost anything that was valuable to you? Something you cherished. Something that's so dear to you, you can't even imagine not having it. But then, somehow you lost it. You're heartbroken. You're saddened. You know... personally how it makes you feel if you can't find it and you think it's lost maybe forever there's a certain kind of pain and I'm just speaking from my experience but I'm sure there's many of you out there that's like me there's a certain kind of pain that comes with losing something valuable You know what that feels like for you. Now let's say whatever you lost and you thought was gone but something happens and now you found that valuable whatever it is And it's in your possession again. I mean, you go through a certain amount of emotion, of joy, when you find something that valuable to you that you thought was gone forever. It was lost forever, but now it's found. Now, amplify what I just said, that emotion, to get in some type of idea what God must feel when lost people are found. 
Let's keep reading. Verse 4. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find, find it? And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which is lost, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Metneho is the Greek word. There are more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no metanoia. Or repentance. I'm not going to review those Greek words. Look up on the website, the Teaching Faith Dictionary, and you can look it up for yourself, and then punch them in, in these verses, and for a deeper understanding of what it means. Now we just read verses 4 through 7. In verses 4 through 7, we find that one sheep, just one sheep, wanders off somewhere. Now this sheep is nowhere to be found. It's lost. Now, if you were a businessman raising sheep, it would take time and money because your time is valuable. So it take time and money out of your busy day to go searching for one lost sheep out of the hundred. Ninety-nine are still there where they should be, but the one that wandered off is nowhere to be found. You even know if it's alive. Now, Jesus is the shepherd in this story. And we're the sheep. The shepherd left the 99 to search out the one. As a sheep business owner, I would think that would be totally illogical to leave the 99 to go after that one. Most business owners would just write off that sheep as a lost. And justify to themselves, at least we still have 99. After all, that's almost a hundred minus one. Most people would just move on and cut their losses. Not the chief shepherd. That's not what he does. And thank God that's not his mode of operation. He left, like I said, the 99 to search out the one. To me, this is saying, these verses are saying to me at least that Jesus is obsessed with finding things that are lost. Thank God he's obsessed with that. And he does find it. Because you read, in verse 5, and when he had found it, he lay it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Now, if that wasn't wild enough, when he finds this lost sheep, And he throws a party. That's what it says here. In verse 6, And when he cometh home, he called together 
his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. He finds the sheep that was lost, and now he's going to throw a party in celebration. He could have just thrown the sheep back into the pen. Probably like everyone else would do. But he didn't. But if he did, you wouldn't see any emotional celebrations and definitely would definitely he would not put out the expense to throw a party but he did come on put some flesh and blood in this story that sheep was lost we were lost but the chief shepherd pulled out all the stops to find us. And when he found us, because he knew exactly where we were, we were, where we are, and we come to him, recognizing he's our savior. He is the one that rescues us from being lost. He throws a party. He celebrates. That's what Jesus did. He called his friends and neighbors to come over and let's celebrate. Join the celebration. Remember that lost sheep? Well, guess what? I found him or her. Listen closely. To Jesus, that lost sheep was just not another asset or number. That lost sheep was dear to the shepherd. And that sheep and that shepherd had an emotional connection. There was an intrinsic value that goes beyond any material value or worth. He could have wrote off that sheep as a lost cause, but he didn't. He didn't. Why? Because he loves every one of his sheep. Our chief shepherd loved us so much, he became a sacrifice that was necessary. We didn't deserve it but he provided it so we could be reconnected to God the Father. He love, loves every one of his sheep. I've been there many times, John 3.16. God so loved the cosmos, he sent his only begotten son. To paraphrase it, so no one should perish who believeth in him. We go to this table of the Lord to remember what Jesus did for us. He spilled his precious blood. He hung there on that cross. A place we should have been. But he took that punishment upon himself for our benefit. That's why we remember him. We remember him knowing that Jesus never forgot about us. It is amazing grace. Which states, I once was lost. But now I'm found. And now since I'm in a place where Jesus knows exactly where I'm at. And that's at that celebration party with him. 
all is well. So I want to remember Jesus tonight as we take these elements. The bread as a symbol of his broken body and, his, and the wine as his precious blood that he spilled for us to reconcile us back to the Father. And all we have to do is trust in His redemption work. And we also could join that party with Jesus. You probably never heard a, a communion like this. Remembering Jesus and celebrating with Him for what he's done for us. If you haven't joined that party yet, what are you waiting for? Get to know Jesus. Get to know what the Word of God has declared about him. Get to know why he died for you. And that is to bring you life in life eternal. We serve we worship, we adore, amazing Savior that did all that for us and then some. That's why God the Father cannot reject us. He won't throw us out of the party because if He did, He would be rejecting His Son and what His Son did to bring us into that party. Well, tonight, February 13th, 2020, if you haven't joined the party yet, do it now. And thank Him for what He's done for you, what He's done for all of us. And every time you eat or drink is a wonderful opportunity to remember what he did. We take it now in remembrance of Jesus, our Savior, for what he has done for us. Take the elements. Play this song.